Well, hello, everybody that I'm seeing on my streams, a bunch of you, like 20 or something like that. Um, so I'm, I'm not too sure where I'm jumping in, but I'm going to do a really quick introduction of who I am, and I'll talk about what we're going to discuss for the next 40 minutes or so. Great. So my name is Meredith Ader. I am the interim director at the library, but I'm also the liaison librarian for three different departments for social work, for nursing, and for teacher ed. And basically what that means is that when you run into a hurdle, which I fully expect you to run into a hurdle, like go ahead and get that in your mind because you're going to do that many, many, many times. Um, but when you run into those hurdles, you can contact me. And basically because of my Leon, uh, liaison role, I've probably heard many of the questions before. And so it just kind of gives me just a couple steps ahead of maybe another librarian that's a liaison to like the business department, which I would be at a loss working with that student. So um, jot down my email, it's ader underscore Meredith, and that's A-D-E-R. Um, you should see my name on the screen, but do email me reach out when you when you have some issues. Um, I am more than happy to continue this conversation one on one. That's um, another thing that I'm very happy to do. Alrighty, so what we're going to talk about tonight are some very bare bones about how to navigate the library web page. And the idea is to make this exceptionally practical for you. The thing about research is that there are lots and lots of opportunities to go down rabbit holes but I don't want one of those rabbit holes being, oh my goodness, I don't know how to work this library webpage. That's, that should be the least of your worries. So take notes. And if you forget something, that's totally fine. Again, reach out to me and we'll rediscuss it. Um, before I jump too much into the webpage, I do wanna give you a foundation of what we hope to see you learn by the end of your program. There are six different components to information literacy. And information literacy is very, very connected with how you research and what you do with those materials. They've got lots of fancy names, these six different components. I renamed them because quite frankly, the fancy names were ridiculous. So I renamed them the question words, who, what, when, where, why, and how. So I figured that's a little bit easier to remember. So I'm going to run through it and I'm going to give you an idea of why this class today is so important based on those six different components. And then we'll jump into the web page. Sound good? Cool. All right. So who, when we talk about who in information literacy, we're talking about authority. And so part of your responsibility is recognizing who is an authority on your particular subject matter. That may or may not be somebody that is in teacher ed. Um, you might discover that you have an authority in a completely different discipline, and that's okay. You're gonna see a lot of cross interdisciplinary inter, um, um, folks, people that can speak into a subject even if they're not necessarily teachers. Um, so authority, though, is also one of those things that's a little bit tricky because it requires you to really, really begin to understand who authors are, um, get to know their work, get to know their reputation. There are many folks that fall from grace because of making really bad judgment calls and some of their research ends up being thrown out. You need to know that. So just make sure that you are doing your research on top of the research. So know who your, who your authors are. Second thing is what. What talks about what kind of material you're looking for. Depending on your project, you may be looking for a newspaper or a journal or a book or a blog post, website. There are a gazillion different options, but realizing that all those different options require a little bit different perspective and how you use it. For instance, if, if your professor tells you they want you to use peer reviewed material, you're not going to be looking at a blog post. You're not going to be looking at a newspaper. You're going to be looking at a journal or a book. All right. 
Um, so we did who, we did what, when. When and this next word, where, are kind of what I feel like I stepped in on um, from Dr. Scortell. Um, when we talk about the word when, it's asking the question, when do I get to step into the conversation? You guys are master students. You need to start thinking about your professional standing. You're taking the extra steps to be more qualified to speak into subjects. And so you're gonna become an expert on your, your particular project. But the thing is, is that that whole question of when requires you to do a ton of reading of a lot of other people that have already said a lot of really smart things. Um, when we talk about where, this is where do I want my research to land? So this is just reiterating what you've already heard. I, I'm very visual. So I usually think about this particular, particular question as a big umbrella. You know, all of us come with our own passions and our own interests, and that's wonderful. I am a massive follower of, um, of Christ and the verse that just kind of become a life verse for both me and my family is Ephesians 2.10. And it talks about how we are very individually crafted into masterpieces. That means that we are all very, very unique, and that's awesome. And so take those unique passions and see it as an umbrella, but then start looking at the little raindrops that come off of it and realize that you can't necessarily talk about the entire umbrella. You may have to settle on, you know, five of those raindrops. There are a little puddle of those raindrops. So the idea is to understand the bigger picture of how you're wired and the things that are really interesting to you, but then pushing it forward to get into something that's bite-sized, something that a reader can wrap their head around. Um, next question is why. Why is a tricky question because it means that you have to look at your own biases because we all have them. We all come to research with a certain perspective and we have to be honest with ourselves. You're gonna find that the more reading that you do, the more you're going to lean towards certain authors or certain journals um, and certain research. And you need to be really, really careful that if you're looking strongly at one argument, you better be looking at the other end of the spectrum and understand the other side of the argument. The thing is with biases is that they're gonna come naturally. So we have to be a little bit unnatural in how we respond to them. And then finally, how. How is talking about how we show um, respect for the person that we're reading. So if you are going to cite, or if you're going to use somebody's material in your, your project, cite. And something to keep in mind is that the more and more familiar you get with your particular topic, the more you're gonna to begin to think that it's common knowledge. So if in doubt, cite. Um, I do like to give two really quick examples of why this is so important, not just for academics, but also for the real world, you know, once you leave college. Um, so college setting, my sister, my oldest, my middle sister is um, a sociology professor down in Texas, and she assigned a paper, a student handed in a paper, and she looked at it, put a big zero on it and an F and handed it back to him. And he's like, why did you give me a zero? And she's like, well, if you're gonna plagiarize, make sure you're not plagiarizing your professor. He totally copied her entire paper and turned it in. <laughs> so, so that's a good example of academic integrity and then professional integrity. Um, my husband used to work under a head pastor, um, this was several years ago, who decided to create like a newsletter and it seemed all nice and wonderful. And the stuff that he was writing was really, really interesting, really good. And one of the congregants looked more into one of the articles that he wrote and realized that he had plagiarized it. Got called out on it twice. Third time, he was actually lost his credentials. This is this person that has his doctorate. 
he completely lost his credentials. So plagiarism, it's a big important thing. Again, if in doubt, cite it. Don't get yourself in trouble, all righty? Okay, so that is the foundation. That's our who, what, when, where, why, and how. Very basic, but the idea is that hopefully that some of this will stick, and then by the time you finish your program, you can look back and go, huh, I kind of got all six of those. That's pretty cool. So let's teach you how to research using our library webpage. And I'm gonna see if I can do this. Again, I usually use Google Meet, but I'm going to try anyway. So I guess it's a screen I wanna share. All right. I'm gonna to go to library, to our library webpage, which is library.roberts.edu. Go ahead and bookmark that. You're going to need it. And I would hate for you to have to waste time trying to find the webpage. Is everybody seeing the library webpage at this point? Am I sharing correctly? Uh, Meredith, it's Dr. Adams. What's do you know what the Wi-Fi password is here for students? Um, it's Red Hawks number one, capital R. Red Hawks. Red Hawks. Yeah, Red oh. Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> Red Hawk number one. Uh, plural. Red Hawks. Okay, so it's R E D H A W K S one. Um, the hashtag or the number sign one. Oh. And I think I think Red Hawks is cap. I think it's capital R. I'm not positive on that one. Okay, thanks. We're gonna have students try here. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. All right. Can y'all see my screen? Are you able to see? The yes, it looks great. Super. Okay. Thanks. Good deal. Making sure we're doing stuff right here. All right. Great. Your um your password worked. It is uppercase R. Okay. Thank you. All righty. I'm gonna try to scooch y'all faces out of the way a little bit so I can see. Okie dokie. So the library webpage was actually revamped about two years ago. And the idea was to make sure, hang on, I gotta get rid of some faces. There we go. Um, the idea was to make sure that when you open your laptop, not necessarily your phone, but when you open your laptop, that everything that you see on the screen is basically the stuff that you're gonna interact with most of the time. You are more than welcome to play around on the webpage. However, you know, if you're in there just to get get it done, then that should be what you're seeing. There are a few major things that I want to make sure that we are looking at tonight. This is my favorite. This is called OneSearch, and we'll discuss that in depth in a moment. Sliding down, we have databases. We have research guides. We have interlibrary loan and then meet with a librarian. Meet with a librarian is, again, if you run into a roadblock, you can either email me directly or you can use this link. It doesn't really matter. Um, research guides, these were developed to help um, different departments have a little bit of a head start whenever you're trying to kind of wrap your, hand, your head around where you wanna go with your research. So I'm gonna click it real fast, just real quick so you can see it. It's alphabetized. And it's not com very, you know, totally complete, but we did try to hit all the, the major departments that have more research um, within their departments. So there is a teacher education research guide there. And I'm not gonna explore it right now, but I do want you to know that that's, that it exists. Um, interlibrary loan. I'm gonna to try to see your faces for a second because this is important. Has everybody signed themselves up in Iliad Interlibrary Loan yet? No, we need to do that right now. So it literally takes like a minute and a half. So what I'd like each of you to do, as long as you've got your computer and you're able to do it, if not, please make a note to do it as soon as you can. You, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click Interlibrary Loan let me get rid of the faces again. And it's gonna ask you to log in. Because I use this all the time, it remembers me that it's last name underscore first name and the password you use for everything else. Click log in. 
And because this is the first time for many of you, you're going to run into a page that asks you a little bit of information um, about yourselves. So go ahead and fill that out. And I'm going to give you a minute to, to do that. Somebody dared to walk on our sidewalk. <laughs> All right. Has everybody filled out that page? Okay, good deal. All right. This is going to be really important as we move forward and talking about how the web page works. All righty. So here's a little hint. Every time you see the Golisano Library in the top left corner, when you click it, it takes you home, back to the home page. All right. Databases, we will talk about just a little bit more, but I'm going to leave it for now, I think. Actually, you know what, I'm not. I'm going to go and click it. I'm going to show you it real quick. So we have a lot of databases, about 100 of them. But the thing is, is that that's not all of them. There are probably thousands of databases. We obviously can't afford to buy them all. So we have a really large selection for, um, for the library. And what I want you to see is that we do have them organized alphabetically, but also by subject matter. Again, there are going to be many times that you need to look um, in other databases. But just so that you're aware, we do have 10 databases that are a little bit more specific to education. And so when I click education, it shows me those resources. Okay, so I'm going to click all on a library, get me back to the home page. And what I really, really want to make sure we're talking about in depth tonight is this section right here. In about 2008, the World of Library of Science discovered something called a discovery tool. And what a discovery tool does is it looks in every single database that we own. It looks in, a, in our entire physical collection. So all the books that are you know, within our library building, it looks in um, partner libraries. So we are part of an international network of libraries, and that allows us to look in their catalog, in their databases, um, to see if there's something that we could possibly borrow, which is what interlibrary loan is all about. And again, we'll go over that a little bit more in depth. And then this tool also will look on the web. And the reason why that is important is because the publishing industry has gotten a little bit crazy in how expensive it is to do um, publishing. Um, every once in a while, um, I'll talk with a professor that is trying to figure out how to get something published and find out that it's literally costing them $3,000 for a three page article. It's, it's uh, publishing industry is a bit much. Um, and so smart people decided that there were ways of bypassing the publishing industry and started something called OER and OA. That stands for Open Education Resources and Open Access. And basically that means it's free to you, which is great. Um, it's free to me as well. Um, and so this tool will look in all those places, again, in all of our databases, our catalog, um, and neighbor or uh, partner libraries catalogs and their databases and looks on the web for those free resources. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of give you an idea of how this works. And typically, I like for this to be super duper practical. There are a lot of you, but I'd still like to make the opportunity. Would anybody like, anybody that already has an idea of what their project is going to be, would anybody like to give me a real quick summary of what they're researching? Thank you. 
I might call on somebody. I'm sure somebody's got something. Um, I, I, was I have an idea. No, oh, go ahead, Jessica. No, Melanie, can't wait to hear it. Go for it. <laughs> Honestly, I'm sure yours is way better, sister. How, how about this? I will take both of yours because Ooh. I would definitely oh. like to show you at least twice. Great. So Melanie, you start first. Um, I don't know if this, I was going to hope that I would get some support and help in honing in the idea, but I was thinking about doing something that's called um, Genius Hour, which is something that um, teachers use to kind of like let the children direct their own learning. Oh, it's called Genius Hour? Genius Hour. Okay. So it's self-directed learning? Yeah. So, so kids basically like like any kind of thought that they have in their head, like, you know, why do the letters C and K make the K sound? And so teachers allow these children to go and explore this topic themselves um, using, the, using the standards, of course, you know, within the, within the standards. So something like that I was thinking of doing. Okay, I'm so sorry, give me two seconds. My dog is needing me a potty. Give me one second. Sorry. So sorry. Didn't want to have a, a puddle to clean up. Um, all righty. And Jessica, tell me what you are thinking. I was thinking um, something about like increasing health literacy starting in earlier grades because the majority of curriculums have mandated health classes like starting around like middle school. Um, but in my mind, I feel like that's like almost not too late, but habits are already built and um, brains are already kind of wired pre previously. So something about earlier health education. Okay. All righty. I'm going to show you how this works. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just type in here, genius hour. It honestly doesn't really matter what you type in here because what we're really trying to get to is hit the search bar and we're trying to get to this page. And the reason why this page is so important is because we need to switch to an advanced search. The thing is when I type in the word genius hour or the, the words genius hour, I get 275, almost 276,000 results, which is that's obscene. We can't work with that many. So we're going to switch to an advanced search and start to show you the nuts and bolts of how the library webpage works. So if you're taking notes, now's a really great time to start jotting this down. So the very first thing is we switch to advanced search and we start to play with this a little bit more in depth. Right now, the, um, the finding tool is looking for the word genius, the word hour, and then the combination of genius hour. But what we really want is we want just that combination. So we're going to ask it to use the exact phrase of genius hour. And when I do that, my results drop down to 531. Massive, massive difference. Now the thing is this, this particular subject I would not do a whole lot more with at the moment other than looking at my filters on the left hand side and making sure we're not including stuff that's not really relevant. So for instance, if you know that you want to stick with peer review journals, grab it. I will go ahead and say that peer review is fantastic, but it's not fail proof. Just because it's peer review does not mean that you're not going to get junk once in a while. And just because it's peer review doesn't mean that really good stuff didn't get, didn't, you know, make the mark. So use peer review with caution. Um, you might also determine that, for instance, that you really just want to look at articles right now. Um, certainly you're going to expand your search at some point in time. You're going to look at other people's dissertations. You're going to look at book chapters. Um, there are definitely other sources, but just for, um, teaching tonight, I want to make sure that I'm showing you how these filters work. The other thing you might want to look at is the fact that we're looking at 121 years of results. You may not want to really look at what was going on in 1900. You might want to limit your research 
to, let's just say the 2000s. I'm gonna check it and I'm gonna apply my filters. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and lock these filters. If you hover over them and lock them, that allows you to go back up here and change things. If you didn't lock them though, and you change some things up here, this is gonna reset itself and just go back to nothing. I mean, for this particular example, that's not that big of a deal, but sometimes it takes 15 minutes to get this page exactly the way you want it. So for instance, I would look at this and say 52 results, that's, that is way more than reasonable. Um, my suggestion always is if you're in the hundreds with your results, you need to stop. Just slow yourself down and start looking at the titles. So that being said, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Before I do, I want you to notice that in the upper right hand corner, I am signed in. The reason I'm signed in is because again, I'm on this library webpage all the time. And so it remembers me. If you are not signed in, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and just get in that habit of signing yourself in. Um, you should see a sign in button up here and you probably should see one right about here in the middle of the page as well. And the reason why that is important is because when you're signed in, this becomes your own personal page, which is a tremendous time saver. If I were doing this research right now, I would completely stop playing with filters and I would start looking at these articles and I would very quickly look at the title and make a very quick assessment of whether or not it's worth a second look. So I'm going to be like, yeah, this article looks good. And it looks kind of like Pinterest. See the little pin, you click it and it's going to zoom it up here to this corner. And I'm just going to keep going and I'm be like, yeah, that one sounds good. That one's promising. I'm just going to keep going until I'm done looking at all 52 articles. And then when I have time later, when I log myself back in, you know, again, making sure your name is at the top corner, when you hit that pin, it's going to take you back to all of your saved searches in reverse order. So there they are waiting for you to take a second look at. Something else to consider is that, again, maybe it took you 15 minutes to get this page exactly the way you wanted it and you don't wanna forget how you got there. You don't have to worry about it. You can hit save search. It's gonna tell me that it's saved. Again, go back to that pen. And then this time, it's always gonna to default to saved items, but this time you're gonna click save searches and you're going to see the parameter that you set. It's gonna take you straight back to it. This is really helpful, especially if you're working on more than one project at a time. All right, so let me look at your faces, make sure everybody's doing good. Everybody okay? All right, good deal. All righty. So within these results, you're gonna see that there's a little bit of information here. You're gonna see that it's available online or sometimes it's gonna say no online access. If it says available online, you're golden. Click the title. It's going to tell you how you can view this. So this particular article lives in three different databases, which was something interesting to note this third one is not an education-based database, but it happens to be sitting in there anyway. So it doesn't matter which one you grab, I'm just gonna grab the top one. And when I do, once it loads, it's gonna take me directly to the article. You'll begin to notice that different databases have a different look. ProQuest is teal, EBSCO is red, Wiley is purple. They're all gonna have a little bit of unique uniqueness to them, but they all also have about the same information. You might just have to look just a little bit to find it. So what you're gonna notice is that all of these databases, whenever you click on the article, will have somewhere, it'll either have a PDF download button 
or it's going to have an HTML link. You're also going to notice that you can cite it, you can email it, you can print it. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. But what's important is that you now have access to the entire article. Just, you know, personal preference. If I'm doing research, I'm going to go ahead and download it and I'm going to stick it in a file on my computer because I don't necessarily want to have to go this route every single time to find it. Um, and something to keep in mind, you're going to begin to under to know your cohort very well. And if you happen to find something that you know that your your peer really could use, be a pal and email it to them. All right, I'm going to close this out for a second. I'm going to go back. And we're going to talk about when it says no on online access. So this is an example. When I click it, this time instead of seeing how to view it, it's going to tell me how to get it. And how I'm going to get it is through Iliad Interlibrary Loan. I'm going to click it. And because you have logged yourself in now, now that we know who you are, it's going to pre-populate this particular article request page. The only thing to make sure of when you're looking at this is that anything with an asterisk, red asterisk, has to have something in that field. If you don't know what it is, it's fine. Just put a big X or something in it. It doesn't really matter what you put in it. But the idea is just to make sure we have enough information that when you submit it, that we are going to be able to find that article for you. Typically, the process of getting an article takes between 24 and 48 hours. Um, it's human based. Um, when you click submit, my interlibrary loan department goes to work. Um, if they happen to be sitting at the computer right then and there, then they're going to jump on it right then and there. And they're going to ask some of our um, um, community libraries, you know, hey, do you have this and can I borrow it? The answer is always yes. And so you'll get the article um, notification as an email. It'll just let you know that your article is ready to be reviewed and you're going to click the link and you're going to get your, your article. And I'm so sorry, my dogs are, they're done being outside. Hang on. Don't want them to freeze. All right. Are there any questions about this so far? And I can't if, see all your faces. Yes, Becky, if, thank you. If for we're in the library doing it, can can we just come up and ask for the article, like a hard copy of it? Is there always going to be like online? That's a great question. Sometimes that they're available online. Sometimes we actually have them. That's a really good question. For instance, question uh, result number six says that it's available online, but it also says to check holdings. When it says that, that typically means that we have the hard copy version of it as well. But I will go ahead and tell you that um, hard copy journals, um, when we are looking at budgetary issues, it is a lot more, um, it's better for us to go the electronic route than the print copy route. So moving forward, you're going to see more and more and more and more available only by way of electronic copy. So, so sometimes yes, sometimes no, but if you're in the library, if it's an electronic copy, print it. You're welcome to do that. In fact, I, I am a paper person. Um, I, I need to interact with the, with the piece of paper, you know, write all over it, highlight it, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, so you, you are more than welcome to do that if you're in the library. Any other questions? Okay, I'm only seeing like six of your faces at once. So if you need something, just please unmute and interrupt me. Okie dokie. One more thing I'm going to show you on this particular result is in this particular space, there is also that citation option. You'll see that on each one of these. When I click it, it's going to automatically pop up three different options for citation. So make sure you know which version of citation you're being requested to use. Click it, and then you can simply copy it to your clipboard. Um, it's a good idea to go ahead and do that immediately. I would not wait on that just because you're going to create a bunch of, of extra work. So 
get used to the fact that you, you need to have some place where you store all of your citations. Um, there are many, many, many options out there. Zotero is a really good one. RefWorks, there are lots of different options, but you can even go old school. You can just simply have a document on your, de your desktop that you can just start adding these citations to. Um, in fact, the way I used to do it is I would print the article and I would print the citation and just staple them together. So depending on what works best for your, your, um, your mind, you know, just pick whatever works. Okie dokie. I am going to real quick, because we're running a little bit close on time here. I want to look at Jessica's topic. I'm going to go ahead and leave these locked, these filters locked over here, because I think that it probably is going to be important to do that. All right, so you're looking at health literacy in the earlier grades. So we're just going to try the combination of the words health literacy. Um, there may be better options and something to consider is when you do one search with health literacy, let's say you get 10 grade articles, you're probably going to need to go back and think of kind of think like a thesaurus. And so maybe it might be health education, you know, or um, health classes. And I'm going to type in, so this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You could certainly write the words kindergarten, you could write K through five, you could write elementary. Um, there are a lot of different things we could write here. I feel like we do need to add another word, otherwise we're going to get a really large result. So let's try elementary. Does that work for you, Jessica? Again, I, I can't I can't see your faces. Yeah, so, thank you. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we'll give it a shot. And again, because we're using more than one word here, I don't want it to look for the word health and the word literacy. I want it to look for that phrase that is exact. And because this is just one word, it's just going to be one word. And I hit search. And we got 2,000, almost 2,100 results, which is okay. That's a, that's a good place to start. So we already have three filters. We're going to start playing with a few more. I'm going to slide down to one that's probably the most complex, but it does a whole lot of neat stuff. And that is the subject filter. When I click it, it's going to give me this pretty large list of words. These words reflect what these articles focus on. So some articles might focus completely on adolescence. Another article might be a lot more focused on an age population. Some of them are going to be about females, some about males, some about nursing. So you recognize that these results are going to be a little bit broader than what you are looking for. And the reason is, is because if you think about health literacy and elementary, they might be talking about elementary practices, not necessarily an elementary school. So what we can do is we can try to get this to understand a little bit more of what we're looking for. And I'm going to grab a few words like education and So obviously not nursing. And you can do this reverse too. You can ex exclude things. I'm gonna grab health education. And let's just try it. Let's see what happens. Sometimes the danger is getting a little bit too small, but we didn't in this case. So again, I'm gonna go and lock my filters just in case I decide to change something in a minute. And I've got 717 results. I know that seems like a lot, but I promise you it's really not. If you do what I was suggesting a minute ago and quickly go through the titles and pin what seems like a decent possibility, you can run through 717 titles in 20 minutes. So I, I highly suggest slowing down at this point. Um, if, it's, if it feels a little daunting, then take a look at your filters. 
And you might want to consider, well, maybe I don't really want to look at 21 years. Maybe I want to, I'm, gonna, I'm Xing that one out and I'm going to, to change my publication date. Let's say we want to look in the last 10 years instead. So check it, apply the filter. Lock it. And that gets us down to 619. So what you're realizing is that you could probably filter this even more depending on, on how comfortable you feel with 619 results. It is very, very doable. Anything in the hundreds is very, very doable. And especially if you're talking about a master's level research project. 619 really shouldn't be too daunting. Um, again, if I can run through these titles in 20 minutes, you know, anybody can. So I would simply just make a real quick assessment just by reading the title, decide what needs to be pinned. And then when I have, when I've caught my breath and I have time to go back to it, I can make that second assessment of what really needs to be looked at. And that second assessment would include something like this. Let's say that I pinned this one. I, I think I did, but let's say that I did. So when you go back into your pens and you start looking at these articles a little bit more closely, what you can start with is looking to see if there is an abstract included. And it's either going to say abstract or description. And so this is a good opportunity to take a little more time now and to read the whole description, determine if it's really what you were hoping for. And if it is, great. Pick one of the databases. Again, it doesn't matter which one you pick. Grab one. And go ahead and download your article, read it, whatever you want to do. But you're going to have access to it at that point again. All righty. Sometimes you will discover that an article is really, really good. And it's really talking about all the things that were really important to you. And you're going to discover that within the article, the author is quoting somebody that is of interest to you or becomes an interest to you. Great thing is, is that you can start looking at their writings. So if if the results have these little downward or upward facing arrows, the downward arrow is basically going to take you to the bibliography. And so you're going to be able to find those particular authors, you click their name, and then you can look at their writing. Or alternately, you click the upward facing arrows. And I'm going to show you this one. And it's going to show you folks um, who have quoted them. So this can be really helpful if you are finding um, that your research needs a little bit more oomph, you know, that you are needing to go down a few rabbit holes in order to get what you really need. All righty. I'm going to stop talking for a moment and give you and stop screen sharing too, if I can figure out how to do that, stop share. All right. What questions do you all have? Is there a way to um, narrow down the page limit for an article? Like, so you're know, like, I only want like an up to 50 page article, not one that's 300 pages. Is there a way to do that? No, <laughs> but I will say that a dissertation is going to be really thick and an article is not going to be as thick. It's a good tool, but it's not, it's not perfect. What other questions? Everybody feeling okay? I just did a presentation on wait time and how teachers never have um, enough wait time. So let's give them a cup. Let's give them a full 30 seconds for those that might need um, 
a little extra wait time to ask a question because we're the only ones that would feel uncomfortable. I have a question. Um, is there a way to filter it? Um, I don't know how to explain this. Like to only find a certain author's work. So if you want to find like a classic, like a theory to base something off of, is there a way to filter who wrote it? I can't remember if you showed us that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Let me, let me show you that real quick. All right, the same place. Let's say that we were looking at, oh goodness. The sun's down, I'm tired. Somebody give John me- John Dewey, John Dewey. John, John Dewey? Yeah. All right, John Dewey, exact phrase. Oh, I gotta shrink out a little bit so I can get to it. Um, I need to reset my filters because that's just going to be a pain. Okay. John Dewey. And we get a whole bunch of results about John Dewey, 109, almost 110,000. But what you're going to find is that you're going to find books about him and books written by him. Um, what you can do is you can change your field. So instead of, right now it's looking any field, but what you can do is you can say, I just really want the stuff that he has written. So author creator is John Dewey. And I hit search. It gives me about 3,400 resources that are related to his writings. Does that answer your question? Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. All right, any other questions? Meredith, are you their first contact person for questions or is there someone else? I would be. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, most certainly. So I'm, I'm easiest to reach by way of email. Uh, I'm on campus on Fridays, but the other four days of the week I am at home. So um, you're welcome to try to find me on Fridays. Um, I'm usually in my office. But um, generally, an email is the quickest way that I'm going to be able to respond. All right. Any other questions? No. Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Great, Meredith. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks. You are welcome. Have a nice Have a day. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.